into the city, walks right past all the guards, and just starts walking and starts preaching, and his message is a little bit odd. He walks into the strongest city of the time, the fortress, and walks in and says, Hi guys, good to see you. Love the place. Beautiful gardens. And in 40 days, it's all going down, and I'm a little bit happy about it. <laughs> burn, they burn. 40 days, you got 39. 39 days, you got 39 days, and this place is going down. 38 days, and this place is going down. Now imagine what would happen if somebody walked into your house tomorrow and said, Hi. My name's Bubba, <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that this subdivision is going down. Going, you got a month, and this place is going to be destroyed. I'm telling you, it's all going to be gone. <laughs> yeah, we got so many that escaped from a state state hospital here, and uh, if you can come down and get them, I think that somebody's going to be looking for them real quick here, because. Uh, <laughs> Have somebody come around here. Just, they're talking about destroying it. Maybe they're going to light fire to my subdivision. I am not sure, but I would like someone to come take care of this person immediately. If that'd be all right, thank you very much. Lock them up. And somehow, and I don't know how, walking into the biggest city of the time, the power center of, of the then world, this guy named Jonah, who has just taking a big deep sea dive you know the story walks into Nineveh and says one simple message 40 days and you're going to be destroyed you can find it in Jonah chapter 3 if you're, you're new to the Bible uh, you're going quite a ways into the Old Testament and you're getting these little tiny books uh, you can pass Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, a bunch of little books, and there it is. Somehow, this guy Jonah walks into the city, and all he does is just... Here's the thing. Okay, to give a little cultural perspective, Jonah is from the Israelites. Assyria, the nation of Assyria, where Nineveh is its capital, are the enemies of Israel. Okay? So he doesn't really want to go to the heart of the beast. They're mean, they're cruel, they torture people. He doesn't really want to go there. So a guy comes and says, Hey, Jonah, I need you to go to Nineveh and tell them that they're going to die. Um, thanks, but I'd rather not die myself. So he goes in the opposite direction, big storm, into the lake, big fish, chomp, chomp, spits him up, he's up, all right, God, I gotta go. He really doesn't like them. He's not there going, Hey, guys, you know what? I love you, but things have been really going bad for you. You've been making some poor choices, so you need to change, or there's going to be some big consequences. No, he's not there with a restoration message. He's there with the, you're going to burn, and I can't wait to watch message. <laughs> okay? So he's not walking around with a warm, loving, like, let's sit down and have tea kind of thing. I would like to explain to you the plan of salvation in four easy steps. They're called the four gospel laws. And I want to explain them to you so that you can receive salvation. No, I'm here because God said that I don't want to, but I'm really going to enjoy watching the destruction of your city because you're my enemy. Four, 38, 37, 36, 35 days. This is not really the best type of really make friends, influence people, change lives type approach. <laughs> if you're wanting to share the gospel with someone, let me recommend you don't come with this plan. I'm just saying to walk into your work, your place of business this week and going, you all are going to hell! It's probably, perhaps, not the way to approach people. I'm just going to throw it out and you work with it and see what you come up with. <laughs> Jonah chapter 3, verse 3. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40! <coughs> um, Wow, my notes got out of order. That was very confusing. <laughs> Forty days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burla, burlap to show their sorrow. They put on a fast. They stopped eating. If you're not wanting to eat, now I'm guessing it's something like, no, I like to eat a lot. Thank you very much. But have you ever been at that point where you've been so stressed out, you've been so on edge, someone who's been so important to you, that food really doesn't even sound that attractive? 
If you've gone through death, if you've gone through divorce, if you've gone through a relationship changing, perhaps a layoff, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Because when the stress of life hits that hard, you know what? I don't really think I want anything else. Thank you very much. I, I don't want anything else. And that's what happens with the people of Nineveh. They declare a fast. There's nothing else that matters except us pursuing you, God, and saying, God, help us now. And I want to bring to you, my friends, that fasting is a lost spiritual art in our culture. In our world, and probably within this family, fasting is not something that most of us have done within the last year, last month. It's a little bit scary. And, like I said, we like to eat. But this is a, this, this, this spiritual discipline, I want to, I want to suggest to you, is kind of like a focused honeymoon with God. Removing distractions to pursue God. And the first reason we see in the book of Nineveh is when you're facing destruction, when the world is starting to crumble in around you, and you're thrown to God saying, God, I am not right with you, and I need to be right with you. That's what Joel talks about in Joel chapter 2. The book of Joel. Let's go back to the left, just a couple books in your Bible. Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, so work that back, stood out on backwards. Um, and you're right there, Joel chapter 2. <coughs> Joel has prophesied destruction. And he says this, starting in verse 12. That is why the Lord says, Turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing and grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for He is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Could I be so bold? And if you are checking out the God thing today, this part of the message doesn't have anything to do with you. But it could be, my friends, that some of us who have played church for a long time and been a part of church for a long time need to fast and pray before God, tearing our hearts open before Him, saying, God, I have been playing games with you for a long time, and I am not anything with you other than I'm a cultural Christian who shows up every week because it's what I'm supposed to do. God, save me now because I'm trapped in this place. I've played this game for so long and it's time to be done with it. And fasting is that moment where you say, this is so important that I will pursue this to the exclusion of all else. I must have you, God. God. It may be time to repent for some of us who've been playing the God game for a long time. It may be time to repent with fasting and say, God, I've played this game for way, way, way too long. And it's time for me to get really serious about it. There's a second kind of fasting that we find in the Word of God. Now, coming up in March is a great weekend called a weekend to remember. Marriage conference. Double tree in. If you haven't had a chance to go, I recommend it. It's a great time to get together and be with your with your loved one and focus on your relationship. My wife and I are planning on going. 